Uh, well, all of you are going to be ambassadors of Hawaii, yeah, for IUCN. You're always an ambassador every day. And so this only talks about that being that beacon of hospitality and ho'okipa, beacon of aloha. E amai na lama kue ho'okipa, ke na na nei na opua uka aina. E he loko mai kai ka manu o kai o na, ke au ho kala e hiki mai ai. Ona kaeva lu, ona kua hivi, ona ha o mako. E ola hava ie, ola hava ie, e ola hava ie. Now this chant specifically talks about the goddess Kaiona. And Kaiona is actually a blind goddess that lives in the mountains of, or, or Mount Ka'ala, the highest point of this island of Oahu. And Kaiona, she was really the goddess of hospitality. If anyone was lost or hurt or something was, somebody was in trouble, she would send her great Eva birds out and they would help and lead those that were lost back to safety. Now, in today, we have many mele and oli that are written about Princess Powahi Bishop. And she is also a lichen to the goddess Kayona because she really was that beacon of ho'okipa and hospitality as well. So as we go through this training, I want you to think about what are those elements and those qualities that you have accepted the kuleana, the responsibility to hold when you are volunteering here at IUCN. All right, but first, the Native Hawaiian Hospitality Association was created over 20 years ago by a group of Hawaiians that worked in the a hospitality industry. They were led by a man uh, who was known as Dr. George Kanahele. And he is more, he's well known as a scholar and, and um, just an inspirational Hawaiian. And one of the things that his mission was, was to bring back the Hawaiian-ness back to what was called the tourism industry at that time. Today we don't call it the tourism industry. Today we call it the hospitality industry. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> He had this great mission and he was inspiring all these people throughout our islands, especially Hawaiians working in hotels and in uh, all the different aspects of hospitality. Unfortunately, he left us very early in his life, well, be, uh, well before he should have gone. But one of the lasting things is this organization. And so our mission is to make sure that we continue his legacy, continue that we make sure that the host culture, the Hawaiian culture, is represented respect respectfully and uh, truly in all that we do in Hawaii, not only in the visit industry. So that's why we're here. Again, my name is Hi'ila Nishibata. There's a team of us. You see us with our beautiful, bright Akala uh, pink shirts today. So if you have any questions about anything, you can ask any one of us. Uh, as we start, I always like to start with this. Aohe pau kaike ikaha lau ko'okahi. There's so many viewpoints in everything we're doing. That's one of the beautiful things about bringing something like the IUCN WCC to Hawaii, is that you get to see some, everything from all these different perspectives from around the world. And so that's what this olelo no eao, or why saying says, reminds us. That even though we might learn one thing about something, there are always different viewpoints. And that's what's great about learning. Yeah? I have some things that I would like to ask you today, especially even beyond uh, our time, my time with you, is to keep a na'au ha mama, an open heart, an open mind. Your na'au is like your guts inside of you, right? Uh, <clears throat> keep it open so that you can learn as much as possible throughout today. Um, please reserve your I knows. Many of us know many things, but like I said, uh, we can always learn something new about something. It's pretty funny, yeah? But it's true. <laughs> and of course, let's have some fun, yeah? Well, let her know. That's really important uh, for all of us as humans. All right, so let's talk about ho'okipa. Ho'okipa, or hospitality. Now, it doesn't, Hawaiian language words and terminology doesn't really equal to what it's meant in, or what is uh, translated into English. But ho'okipa is actually the act of visiting. And for most of our history in Hawaii, most ali'i yeah, had some type of law, some type of kanavai that said that you had to show ho'okipa 
to anyone that came around you. The thing of responsi responsibly for a guest or someone who's staying with you was part of who Hawaiians are and were. Yeah, because we're still here. So it's even though you may not be of ethnic Hawaiian, <laughs> Hawaiian blood, you're still part of this place we call Hawaii, which means that you're accepting that same law, accepting that same kuleana. It doesn't matter if you don't have kupuna or so forth, but you are here, which means that you are part of this place. Yeah? The hospitality industry in Hawaii uh, went back so many years, even before hotels and so forth, because people would come from all over the world to Hawaii, even if we don't know in our history books. There are, are there, well, it wasn't written, but there are many stories of Japanese fishermen getting lost in the ocean, you know, because of a storm, you know, aqua fishermen, and landing in Kona, Hawaii, and then just being accepted into the family, into the civilization, because Ho'okipa was the law, right? There was no, like, oh, you're Japanese, I'm Hawaiian, you're Filipino. There was none of that. We are human and you're a part of us now. Because there was really no way for them to get back to where they were from. So this law, this responsibility, was more important than anything. So whenever Hawaii hosts something big like IUCN or like APEC in 2011, we take this seriously. And so I want to mahalo you already for accepting this kuleana to be part of this hospitality that we're going to show the world. Yeah? Now, kuleana, I keep saying it as responsibility, is actually more than a responsibility. It's actually a privilege. It's not something, you know, responsibility in English means, oh, it's almost kind of a burden, but it's actually a privilege, yeah? It's a privilege that you have the opportunity to interact with all these people that we're hosting. It's a privilege that we live in this beautiful paradise and we get to share our aloha. So when you accept, when accepting this kuleana, think of it that way. Yeah, that it's, it's our privilege to be able to, to host these people in, in the most beautiful place on this earth. Now, a good host, right? A good ho'okipa or mea ho'okipa or ambassador can tell stories and history of the place. Because as you're directing somebody to the bathroom, because that's probably the most <laughs> questions you're going to get, right? Where's the bathroom? Or, oh, where do I go buy lunch? Or that kind of stuff. You know, just those basic need questions. You know, there may be the opportunity where you can share something special from Hawaii. Because from our mo'olelo and our stories, and knowing about this place, yeah, not only Oahu or Honolulu or Waikiki, if you can impart something from our place, that is the true aloha that you're gonna be sharing from us. And I know that every single one of you have something to share. It doesn't matter if you've just moved here, it doesn't matter if you've lived here all your life. There's some type of story that relates to this place that you can share. But I also challenge you in the next week <laughs> to learn more stories, especially stories about this place that we call Waikiki. One really easy one is Waikiki means spouting waters. Yeah, because <clears throat> underneath, even underneath all of the hotels and all of the places in Waikiki, they're still spouting those uh, street, uh, what are those called? Punabai. I want to talk Hawaiian, I call them <laughs> But the, uh, all of these spouting springs are still there. If we have big rain, a lot of the underneath uh, floods, they even talk about parking lots like water coming from the walls. Yeah? There's so much water that is still in Waikiki, even if we see these buildings. But what, what, uh, where, the, where it comes from is from Manoa, Palolo, yeah? these ahupua'a that we look straight up. So actually, even from the convention center, you can show somebody, if you're in the right place, you can show them beautiful Manoa. And you can tell ma that Manoa is the widest. Yeah? Manoa means wide and expansive. It's the biggest. Uh, Ahuwa'a, land division, on this side of the Moku o Kona. We call it Moku o Kona on this side of the island. That's why this weather is like Kona Hawaii, if you're, uh, if you're familiar with that. So when we look up at Manoa, it's the widest valley, and it was once the breadbasket of food for this side of the island. 
Why do you think that? Because you know how much water there is in Manoa? Chok, right? Right? Chok, chok water. I mean, like, amazing and amazing and amazing amount of water. And it, it comes down, right, through those beautiful valleys. There was Logikalo, Tara Patches, the entire valley. There's actually just not a very old picture that you can find of Manoa where they show you. It's all Logikalo, all Tara Patches. There must have been so much Kalo that came out of this valley that, of course, it was our breadbasket for this side. The staple, right? Haloa, the older brother of the Hawaiian. So as the water comes through and through Palolo, because Palolo is also a beautiful valley, not as big, but beautiful, plenty of water, everything, you know, and as it comes through, it ends in Waikiki. So at one time, there were three streams. The first one that went through what we call the Kapuhulu groin today, right? That goes, you know, you can walk out now, but if you can imagine, there was actually a stream that flowed out, Kue Kaunahi, it was called. The second stream, it actually came right through what we call the Moana Surf Rider today, Apua Kehau. And there's still surfers who say, if you go swimming right in front of the Moana, you can still feel that water yeah, coming from underneath the Apua Kehau. And then the third stream was the Pi'inayo, which would be on the other side, which is not really Waikiki. That, that side of uh, Waikiki is called Kalia, yeah? where Hilton Hawaiian Village sits today. So right where they have what is called the Duke's Lane area, it would have came straight out into the ocean. So all of these streams coming down, what happens is the, when the Alawai Canal was uh, built in the 1920s, it diverted the streams from going straight into the ocean. So you still see how much water, right? Because the Alawai is always flowing. It's pretty high all the time. And so all the water comes through that. So Waikiki, spouting waters pretty simple things that you can just share with, with the visitor and they can walk away learning something more and appreciate the place that we're in right now. <laughs> so again, it's about understanding the, and honoring, respecting and taking care of our place. Our place, Hawaii, is first. We keep that first in our minds as the host and the guest will respect it when, it, when they come here. And they'll appreciate Hawaii more because of our pre appreciation of being host of this place. And which goes along lines with conservation, right? The IUCN is about taking care of the earth. How we take care of the earth is to learn about it, yeah? Learn about the place. Now many of you have seen this Olelo Noel, O Ke Aloha Ke Kuleana O Kahi Malihini. And I'm gonna be honest with you, for many, many years I'm like, what does that mean? Even as a Hawaiian language student, even as a teacher, I said, I still don't get it. I really don't get it. It was only till last year that I finally understood. I kept going to my head, what does that really mean? It really means that aloha. You and I have the kuleana to show aloha to anyone that you may know or you may not know. That's what this really means. They translate it as love is the host in strange lands. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense to me. But what it really is, is aloha. And each one of us found our way to these islands, including those who are Kanaka Maoli Hawaiian. Yeah? We came here on Va'a. Other of you came here on uh, Mokulele, on the um, plains. Many of your ancestors came on boats. Yeah? Each one of us came here with the three W's, right? We know the three W's, right? The wind, the wings of the birds, and the waves, yeah? All of us had to come to this most isolated place in the world, and to survive in this most isolated place in the world, even the plants, even the little happy face spiders, even the kahuli, they have to show aloha to each other, right? And what I think about is think about all of these little things that are not, they're not all little, but think about the spiders. Some of the spiders, most of the spiders have some kind of defense mechanism, right? A lot of the plants, like the nettles, we have nettleless nettles, right, that are, are, are here. Plants that have like toxic defense mechanisms, different places, animals with these defenses that will just kill you in other places, come to Hawaii and they lose it all. Many of our naturally native occurring plants, which means that they came on their own, right, with no help from humans, 
and animals that came lost all their def defenses. Isn't that amazing? And they still survived for years and years, which to me is a signal that aloha is not only reserved for us humans, right? The aloha extends into the natural world, into the, the plants, the animals, everything, because they didn't have to defend themselves. So what this Olalo no Yao tells me is that not only us shows aloha to those that we don't know, but that the plants and the animals, even the fish <laughs> or whatever have you, they do that in Hawaii. What a special place, isn't it? What's a, what a special place that we live in. Um, oh, actually, sorry. So another cool thing that we can point out, if they're staying in Waikiki, is what they call in English the wizard stones. I don't like calling them wizards. But they were kahuna la'au lapa'au. They were healers that came from Kahiki. So our cousins from somewhere in Oceania below us, yeah? came to us, four of them, and they toured the islands and they healed people. So they had a special type of healing power. When their time was done, they put their blessings or their mana into four stones. These stones are extremely heavy, but they were able, our people that lived here, were able to move these stones from Kainu Ki, yeah, which is kind of far, so it's not that close to Waikiki. And they did this through prayers and oli and manna. Yeah, so these kapohaku uh, kapai mahu is what they're called, are right by the uh, the police thingy, <laughs> right at Kuhio Beach, right, right there. And it's it's now there's a there's a beautiful um, gated area, but these four stones still represent one of the things that Waikiki is known for, and that's for healing. Did you guys realize that? That the healing waters, that Waikiki in the front, right? Right in the front of Royal Hawaiian uh, Hotel, as well as the uh, Sheraton Waikiki, that area is called Kavehevehe. And Kavehevehe was where Queen Kapi'olani and Queen Lili'uoklani would swim in the healing water. Princess Ka'io Lani, yeah, grew up in, uh, born and raised in Waikiki. She also spent time there. She enjoyed the water, the surfing. All of the ali'i, yeah, that from Kamehameha down, or actually before Kamehameha, if we're going to the O'ahu lineage of ali'i, all had a place in Waikiki. It was this, it's a special place. It still is, yeah. So it's still, still a special place, and that's why it attracts all of these visitors still today. They're attracted to the mana and the healing of that place, of the place. Ma'ili Kukahi is the, uh, one of the um, most amazing ali'i of O'ahu. I don't have time to tell you about him, but if you get a chance, you should research him. He actually moves the capital, or what was called like the, the focal point of the ali'i ship from Waialua, yeah? Near what we call the birthing stones today. That was really where the ali'i resided. That was the most manaful place, or is still the most manaful place in Oahu. But after he establishes peace for many, many years here on Oahu, he actually moves that to Waikiki. And so Waikiki gets this acclamation, yeah, this acclaim of being this amazing, beautiful place that has healing and a, a playground of ali'i, they call it, yeah, sometimes. So, Waikiki, just talking a little bit about it, you can see there's so much more on that though. There's a very, um, Dr. George Kanahele actually wrote a short book called Waikiki that tells you a lot of the mo'olelo of Waikiki if you're interested as well. Now, Duka Hanamoku, Duka Hanamoku's birthday was just last week, yeah, August 24th. He is very much the epitome of the ambassador of Aloha, right? I think to myself, if I am going to be an ambassador of Aloha, one of the people that I would like to emulate is Duka Hanamoku. Although he was a very shy or a very reserved to himself man, he really believed in aloha, ho'okipa, and hosting visitors. On the side of this statue, actually, there's a little plaque, and he actually has a quote about aloha. And he says that aloha is the key to, make, to, uh, to making the Hawaii the center of peace 
Yeah, the center of peace and fellowship around the world. So he took the job of hosting at his Duke's bar. Yeah, he would be there when he was alive, from what I understand. People would flock to that bar and go and visit with him because he emulated that ambassadorship, emulated that uh, ho'okipa yeah, that we're talking about. So when you have a chance, if you're down there, go and check out the statue. It's actually a very long quote, but it's really cool. And I, was, I never noticed it until just the other month when I was looking at the statue. And I thought, wow, he really was, and still is today, that beacon of hospitality. All right, so one of the other things that makes us good hosts is to be able to pronounce the place names and other things, other street names, and, and all those kind of great things that we have in Hawaii correctly. So I'm going to assume, and many times that's not really good, but I'm going to assume that most of you speak Hawaiian or pronounce Hawaiian very well, right? Right? I'm sure you do. I'm going to take that. <laughs> because one of the reasons why Olala Hawaii is so important to this place is because it's the original language of this place. When you ask somebody what is their name, you're actually, in Hawaiian, instigating and activating the water in their bodies. Because you say, Ovai Kohi Noa. And Vai, most of us know is fresh water. Yeah? Like Vai Waikiki. And so it's actually activating more than just your answer, but it's act activating your soul. And it starts making your water inside of you vibrate. That's really what Olalo Hawaii does. In Oli and chant, have you ever been to some place where all of a sudden somebody's offering an Oli and you get chicken skin all over your body or you see these manu start flying or you see these clouds start forming or you see rain just boom? Right ahead, right? Or makani, wind, yeah? Answering. That what is what Olalo Hawaii does. I don't know about the other languages, but I know Olalo Hawaii does. And so it's really important that we pronounce, especially our place names, especially even the road names. You know that in Waikiki, especially, each road is named because of something specific that was on that road or that area. For example, Pawa Kalani yeah, is a road in, uh, on Waikiki. It goes Maka to Makai. Yeah? So Pawa Kalani was the name of Queen Lili O Kalani's garden in Waikiki. So that place name is there to remember that that's where Queen Lili O Kalani's garden was. That is the same garden when she was in prison at Yolani Palace that this little boy would go and uh, collect the flowers. Yeah? and wrap the newspaper in it, and give it to Lili O'Kalani, and they would let him go because he was this little boy. Yeah? The guards, oh, this little boy is so sweet. Yeah, I'm going to bring these flowers. Not knowing that he was a messenger, right? taking information to Lili O'Kalani in her imprisonment. So you see, even the street names need to be pronounced correctly because usually it signifies something significant in that place. So let's go with Olalo. <laughs> The Pi'apa. We're going to just do this because I'm going to wake you guys up for just a little bit. <coughs> you don't have to stand up. There's too many of you. All right, but follow me, okay? We're going to do the YWC action, okay? You guys ready? All right, you guys ready? A. 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 E. E. O. O. U. You got it? Because that's the most important part of pronunciation in our language, is if you pronounce the vowels correctly, then you will most likely pronounce the word correctly, even if you don't know what it means. Yeah? One of the things is, is that you guys all recognize this alphabet, right? Because it was written down, eventually, by English-speaking missionaries. So our alphabet is actually based on the English language. And most of us, I would assume, know lang English in this room. Most of us, or at least a little bit of English. That this isn't that hard. And so that's why I have faith that all of you will say O'ahu. Everybody say O'ahu. O'ahu. Do you see how that sounds different from what we say? Why does it sound different? Okina. There's an Okina. I just pick some of the things. 
things that I thought we could have fun with and uh, just say together. Sounds good? All right, so let's start with Hawaii, everyone. Hawaii. Hawaii. So some people ask, why is it Hawaii or Hawaii? Well, just like all of the other languages in the world, Hawaiian had many different dialects, right? Just like Pidgin English. Because if you're from Kauai, the way you speak Pidgin is different from if you're from Hilo. Yeah? If you're from Kahului, you speak different from even in Lahaina. Yeah? So just like that. So in Hawaiian, there are many things that no more, no more one rule or no more hard task rule. And so for Hawaii and Hawaii, we can say it either way. Yeah? All right, uh, let's go across. Waikiki. Waikiki. Okay, Oahu. Oahu. Honolulu. Honolulu. Yeah, man. Oh, you have such a bad habit, yeah? Honolulu. <laughs> and although, if you said Honolulu, it wouldn't be necessarily incorrect if you translate it, but it is Honolulu. Okay? And everybody say, Anoai. Uh, that's a greeting. You can actually, Hawaiians didn't really greet each other with aloha every day. It really was more anoa'i. Yeah, that was more of a greeting. So you can use that. And it's actually kind of fun because it's different and people are not used to hearing it. Um, and if we make it in practice, I think it's cool. Yeah? So we can start. Everybody, anoa'i. And then, kalakawa. Who was he? He was a king, right? He was one of our kings of our Hawaiian kingdom. And it's the one of the main roads in Waikiki that everyone says Kalakaua, right? Mm -hmm. But it's actually Kalakaua, or the day of war. And we know that in his life, if you study his life, he had many battles that he went through. And so we don't know why he was named that, but maybe that's something. But his name is Kalakaua. All right, Galina. Vilina really means like welcome. So if you're addressing a large group, I like to use that more with like a larger group than just one person. Yeah, it's kind of more formal, Vilina. So you can use that as well when you're talking to a group, when you're uh, doing your hosting thing. You can use that and say, instead of saying bye, right? You can say that. You say, ma'alama pono. And the one of the reasons I want you guys to use ma'alama is because ma'alama ike kai. Ma'alama ike aina. Yeah, we use that a lot in conservation terms. And so it's a good word that we can share with our friends from all over the world. Maybe they can start using it as well. All right, ekalamai. Ekalamai is short for ekalamai yau, which means excuse me. So it's also a mihi or a, uh, uh, what is that called? When you try to ask forgiveness. <laughs> so ekalamai, right? Ekalamai. And it's also like if you want to get somebody's attention, you say, oh, ekalamai, ekalamai. You know, you can use that as well. That's also something that you can even use way after I use again, too. All right. Ke olu olu. Which really means please. Olu olu in Hawaiian means pleasant and kind. So you're really saying, please be pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what you're saying. So it's a good one, right? You can say, oh, ke olu olu, can you hand me this, right? Or, um, oh, please go this way, ke olu olu. Right? You can use it. So you just use it and use it in front of your phrase or in the back of your phrase. And then let's all make a make a pledge, put up your right hand, that we're not going to say thank you, that we're only going to say mahalo. Everybody? Mahalo. Mahalo. All right? That sounds good? Sounds easy? That's an easy one. I know you can do that one, right? So we can happily have these thousands of delegates leaving Hawaii saying mahalo. That would be kind of cool, right? Yeah. And then, ahuiho. Which means until we meet again. That's what's beautiful about Hawaiian. There is hardly anything negative. You have to be super intelligent to say swear words in Hawaiian. No, really. You have to be like super, super intelligent to be able to cut down somebody. Because uh, they do it poetically, which is like oh, amazing. So, what a wonderful language, right? That you really have to work hard to be negative. You really have to work hard to not be nice. 
<laughs> so let's use it. Yeah. So again, uh, later, uh, one of my associates will come up and she'll explain to you guys about the app. And there's all this uh, for you folks to use. Okay? Right? So all of you are going to pronounce correctly from now, right? Yeah. It's like a magic wand. Ding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the cool things. But what's cool is if you just press over there, it'll turn it into English. So it's easier for you to say, um, see. Now, the other thing is you also want to do the Dropbox to all dictionaries. Um, but you don't need to do that. You can just type in. So you can type in either a Hawaiian word or you can type in an English word. And for the most part, it's one of the easiest resources that you can use. Because somebody might ask you, like, oh, what is the word for flower? I mean, you probably know that. But, uh, but you understand what I'm saying. They might have a question, and this is a great way that you can answer them without making something up. Because you know what happens if you make something up, right? <laughs> I joke. Okay. Well, I don't know. Don't, don't hold me to that. <laughs> All right, uh, I better check the time. Okay, we got some time. Okay, so these are some examples of stories that lean themselves to Ho'okipa. One of the most interesting stories, and very short, is how Nana Kuli got its name. Who here is from Nana Kuli? Anybody? Oh, cool, one. <laughs> <laughs> Mahalo. No, that's awesome. Because Nana Kuli is not very big. <laughs> so that's pretty good that we got one, because uh, it's not a very big place. It traditionally did not have many resources, so the people there were not hospitable. They ignored the laws because they couldn't. They really could not share their food. They couldn't really open up their houses to be hospitable because they didn't have as many resources as other places on uh, the White and I coast. Yeah? So that's why it's called Nana Kuli, because your Kuli is your knee, and they would look down at their knees when people came by. Interesting, yeah? So don't get mad at them. You know what I mean? They just, they had to feed themselves first, right? So it's just one of those things. Yeah, so Nana Kuli. So mahalo the one Nana Kuli. Ew. Yay. Okay, now. Uh, I talked about Princess Powahi again. One of the things about Powahi, and I didn't graduate from Kamehameha, okay? So, is that she uh, really was that though. She accepted anybody could come. She had a house, uh, her and Charles Chale, yeah? They had a house in downtown Honolulu that was given to her by her, her parents, Abner and Laura, yeah, Abner Paki and Laura Konia. And, she, and everybody would come. They would come, they would sit under the tree outside and she would talk with them. Yeah, so she was really that olu olu, that loko maikai, that beacon of aloha uh, during her time. Now, Pele. Now, this is what's cool. Now, Pele is not only reserved for the island of Hawaii, and I'm actually from Hilo, so I'm pretty fiery, like you can see. Yeah? <laughs> but Pele, I realized after years of just loving her, right, is that she is a tester. So remember I talked about the Ali'i having these laws about Kana, about Ho'okipa, that these laws that you sh could not turn anyone away, right? No matter what, you couldn't turn anybody away. You had to feed them, that's why they say, my, my, ai, right? Come, come, eat, right? That's why, yeah. So anyway, she has that story, right? That one story that she, well, there's more than one, but this one story where before she'll have an eruption, she'll go to the area where the eruption will flow and she'll visit the houses. And the houses that say, my, my, come inside, would be spared. And the houses that told her, or just made like they wasn't home, is really what they would do. Yeah, no, really, they wouldn't. They wouldn't even, they would make like she wasn't there. They weren't there. That's where the lava would flow. So she's the test. She's the test. Isn't that amazing? Right? And she would be this old woman, you know, and nobody would want to look at her and all that kind of stuff. And there's these cool stories about how, like, she even would test some families because she never believed, yeah, that they were being true, even though they told her, come inside, eat. So then she would, there's this one, I love it. She would come inside and they would give her poi, like a, you know, an umeke, just for her, of poi. She would eat it all and she would say she wants some more. And they would go get it and come back. And then she would eat it all and go ask for more. And they would look at her like, really? Right? That's not Hawaiian, right? That's not Hawaiian. But that they did it. They did it three times and she knew. She knew that they were truly 
showing aloha. Isn't that awesome? So awesome, right? She's this tester. Now also, that's, I mean, that's, well, right now it's only on the island of Hawaii, but she visits all the different islands. And on this island, right, she is seen walking sometimes on that dark drive, right, on Sandy Beach side, right? Because it's all windy and everything. And so sometimes you'll see her dressed in all white, usually really beautiful, sometimes with a red flower in her hair walking, and you would have to pick her up. Why is that? Why would you go pick up this strange woman, even though she's beautiful, on the side of the road? Well, really, what she was doing was keeping you safe. Because a lot of times, right, driving on roads that have no real light and are windy, some people fall asleep. So she would come to people in these visions, right, to keep them awake. And then you have those cool stories, right? People picking her up and she asking for a cigarette and, she, and, and, and then you want to give her a lighter, but she goes, she doesn't even say it, and she uses her hand and lights it. I always wanted that to happen, because I think that's cool, right? That's a cool story. Yeah, okay, I better, I better not go driving on that side. But, <laughs> but it's really cool, all these different mo'olelo that we have that we can relate back to being a good person and being a good host, yeah? And being, showing aloha to each other. That's really what it comes down to, yeah? All right, so what is aloha? What really is aloha? Hmm, think about it. It is a law, right? So we're continuing. We're continuing in the, the ways of our, our old people. It's a law. We're really thankful that Anake Palahi Paki, she, before she passes away, makes sure that there is an actual aloha spirit law. And I think that's cool, right? If we knew, oh, maybe we should use it when we get a speeding ticket. <laughs> but if the policeman should have shown me aloha, get the law. <laughs> try on, try on. <laughs> I wouldn't try it. All right, don't do that. But, but there's actually an aloha spirit law. One day, one day, somebody will use it in a really great way. It'll be really awesome. Uh, so she, inside of the law, oh, you can't really see that, sorry. But repeat after me. Akahai. Yeah, she translates aloha into these values, which means kindness and tenderness. Lokahi. Lokahi. Right? Meaning unity, harmony. Olu olu. Being pleasant. Yeah, remember ke olu olu? Yeah. You must be pleasant. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And then ha ha ha. Ha Humility. And then aho nui. With his patience. Yeah. It's really hard to show all these things all the time, but I know you can do it. You know why I know you can do it? Because we live in Hawaii. We're very special people that we live in the most isolated place in the world. There's only special people that can make it here, right? You guys all know those people, right? They've moved to Hawaii and uh, yeah, in a month they're gone. No, really, I really believe this. I really believe that us being the Pico Kapaki Pika, the center of the Pacific, you exhibit these things all the time. Sometimes you may not know it, but you do. And that's why you're here, yeah? So the honi, right? That is an expression, that is the physical manifestation of aloha. When two people come together, yeah, it can even be a child and a, and a father, well that's the most like loving, when you see a, a parent and child honi each other. Because you can literally see the exchange of breath. You can see the physical manifestation of the pure aloha that comes from the breath of your nose that they exchange. So if you've never had a honey, make sure you go home and honey somebody, okay? You may not know what you're doing, but do it! <laughs> because no, because it's a completely different experience. Now if you sit, don't do it, yeah? That's not a good thing. But you feel good and you wanna give aloha to somebody, this is the most pure way that you can do it. Hawaiians believe that the air in your nose is not tainted, yeah? Because we kind of say bad things from our nose. The air in your mouth is tainted because we can say bad things, yeah? But that pure breath exchange, reciprocal, is aloha, yeah? All right, so with that, I want to bring up, oh, actually, before that, you know, we have these beautiful mics. I'm not used to having mics. But anybody got questions, you can come up to the mic. 
Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Any <laughs> <laughs> oh, no question. Oh, no question, sorry. She will go back to him. You have a question? <laughs> Hawaiian food, yeah. We got two places, yeah, in Kapahulu, right, to eat Hawaiian food. Yeah. Hopefully, there will be opportunities for them to experience authentic Hawaiian food through the conference. Unfortunately, I have not gone through everything, so I don't, I'm not sure. Yes. I'm, I'm only, so I've only been here for a couple of years. Um, I've always wondered, is there a you're welcome? You know, there's a problem. Oh yeah, actually. So one of the easiest ways you can say you're welcome is aole pilikia. Everybody? Aole pilikia, which means no problem. But our old people, yeah, like my grandma, my tutu would say he mea iki. He mea iki. Which is, it's just a small thing, don't worry about it. He mea iki. Yeah? Now there's some really fancy ones, but no need to do those. Just do those two. <laughs> More easy and it's a little bit closer, you know, but uh, Ole Pilikia is a really good one and He Mea Iki. Mahalo for that question. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Any dying mo'olelo? I might know it. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Yeah. No? All right, with that, I want to bring up uh, Lani here. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> you know what's cool is she created the app. So she's going to tell us about the app, and this app can really give you tools to be the best male ho'okipa, yeah? Aloha mai kako. Um, so we created a uh, training mobile app um, for Hawaiian culture, and it will be, it's a native app that will be, um, a native mobile app <laughs> that will be on um, the Google Play stores and um, the um, iTunes stores. And you will all get a email, receive an email with a link to the app. Okay, um, it will cover all the things that Ilani covered today, and more, and more, more, more. There is a, a location, you know, a location where you're at, and a little bit about the location, um, wherever you're wanting to go on Oahu. Um, a little bit of information on that, um, Hawaiian words. Um, conservation phrases, all in Hawaiian, um, just a, a lot of information on that app, and, it, and it's really fun, so I encourage all of you, um, once you receive the email, to download the app and, um, you know, play around with it and have fun with it. And thank you all for coming today, and we look forward to seeing you the, during the conference. Thank you. Okay, before, before my section is done, I want to leave you with one last thing. You know what, uh, I got this question when we first started to train or share our Hawaiian culture and language with, uh, with others. Not, you guys are my last audience. We actually were, we did webinars to Switzerland and so forth. And so one of the things is what really is conservation to Hawaiians? Yeah, what is really the epitome of conservation what is one thing that we can talk about that says conservation? And all I could think of was the Kumulipo. So the Kumulipo is a 2,000 plus chant. And it actually traces, it traces the lineage of different families all the way down to the beginning of life, which is, starts with the Koropala. Can you imagine that? That the Hawaiians realized that the Koropala was one of the most significant yeah, things in, in creating life. So there are seven va, seven chapters, uh, where everything is being birthed from the coral pala to those that things that crawl, those things that have wings, those things that are in the ocean and the land. So something is birthed in the ocean, and their kia'i, or their partner, is born on land. Yeah. So this goes through, that's what the whole chant is, it just goes through and it connects everything. Everybody has a pakana, everybody has a partner that guards over them. And then it's after or the seventh va where, oh and everything's in darkness, which is kind of cool. Everything's in darkness and all of a sudden, light comes and it's the birth of man. So what does that shout tell us? 
that tells us that man's responsibility is to take care of everything birthed before him. It says that that is our responsibility as a person. That all these things are much older than us and they are our elders that we need to take care of. And when we fail to do that, that's when we lose them. Isn't that crazy? One of the coolest things in our history that proves that the Kumulipo, well, I think it's true, but those people that need you know, examples is the relationship between the sandalwood in the forest and the whales in the ocean. They are actually kia'i, they are partners in the Kumulipo, and in the 1820s, yeah, there's the China trade in Hawaii, and our people, our Hawaiians, well, 1820s, a little bit before that too, people just went into the forest and cut down these sandalwood trees. Hawaii had this beautiful, or has, this beautiful endemic uh, sandalwood that has a different smell, just a little different from their cousins in other places. And the Chinese wanted it. And so the trade was coming through and just forests of sandalwood were just destroyed. Once they were gone, guess what happened? The whaling industry started. And we had the devastation in the ocean with the whales. So how could our people know, how could these people know that the sandalwood took care of the whales and the whales took care of the sandalwood? How could they know? They're so, they don't even look alike. Right? What is? Their names, their names, yeah, is the Awa, 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 is the sandalwood, and then the Palawa is the whale. Again, another reason we need to pronounce the names, the mean things correctly, because those names give clue on who is the partner, kia'i, or guardian. Yeah? That's only one level of the kumulipo. But when we talk about conservation, that is, to me, where you go back. That is the map that you can go back to help us understand what needs to happen uh, if something is in trouble. Or what happened that made something else in trouble in our uh, natural environment. All right, so with that, I want to say mahalo. mahalo. Yeah, mahalo for your attention. Mahalo for... Uh, giving of yourselves and your aloha and your time to IUCN WCC. One of the coolest things is Hawaii is the perfect place to always hold and uh, hold world conferences. Yeah, This is the place. This is the place of aloha. And if anybody in the world is going to do something, they need to come to Hawaii. That's what I say. All right. So mahalo from the Native Hawaiian Hospitality Association and enjoy the rest of your training. Aloha.